Good morning. I'm Sean Bennis. I am the coordinator of Henry Ford Health Systems Caregiver Program. And joining me today is Reverend Jim Kraft. He is the Director of Advanced Care Planning at West Bloomfield Hospital and Macomb Hospital. So welcome, Jim. Thank you. And Jim also is a chaplain. So I'm not sure if everybody knows what a chaplain is or all of those responsibilities that a chaplain has and how they can be beneficial to you. So maybe, Jim, you can tell us a little bit about what your role is. Sure, Sean, sure. thanks for letting me come. Uh, chaplains are um, multifaceted, um, all different religions. Uh, some are even non-religious and provide support hmm. for patients and families when they're in the hospital. Okay, so what are some of the things that that they do? Because when I think of chaplain, I think of bringing communion or praying with somebody. What What are the things that chaplains can do? Yeah, typically that's where uh, people think that's the only thing that chaplains do, that they just come in and pray or read scriptures or, or provide a, a communion or some a sacrament like that. But actually chaplains do quite a bit. Um, we're there for both patients and families because sometimes the patient doesn't need the chaplain, but the families do. Mm, go and figure. <laughs> we, yeah, and we're there really to provide support. So people might not realize that a chaplains are available when I'm anxious or when I'm fearful. And many times people are fearful when they're facing uh, medical situations that they're, you know, they're unsure of. Uh, they may have gotten a bad diagnosis or, or some bad news and they need the chaplain to provide encouragement and support so that they can cope with, with this new uh, news. And sometimes they just need uh, help with making decisions. Okay. So what kind of help do chaplains do with the whole decision making? Well, chaplains can provide a, a good sounding board to help people think through what's important to them. Okay. When people make decisions, when they're faced with medical uh, choices, uh, many times we make those decisions based off of our spirituality, based off of what's important to us, what is valuable to us, and what, what makes life meaningful to us. So chaplains can help in that uh, teasing out with the patients and the families to say, this is what's important, this is what we're trying to achieve, and then what are our medical options. Okay. So. So do, does the medical community have like a, a certain uh, certain name for for that or or like how, how would we even start talking about that if we don't even know what where to start? Yeah, well, it, it's we call it advanced care planning. Okay. Uh, and advanced care planning is a, a national uh, movement. Uh, sometimes people associate advanced care planning with advanced directives. Okay. So if you have ever created an advanced directive or a living will, uh, people think, well, I've done advanced okay. care planning. But advanced care planning is so much more. Okay. So it's important, though, to have an advanced directive ahead of time, there. right before coming into the hospital. We should be having these conversations with our families ahead of time. But do you see that often happening? Uh, no, not really. Statistically, only 30% of the population even have an advanced directive. 30% of the population. So I wonder if you have an advanced directive. You watching, whether it's live or you're watching this recorded, do you have an advanced directive? Yeah. And, and how would you get one? How well, do you get one? Let me back up just a bit because even more important than the advanced directive is the conversation. Ah, okay. Pa particularly for caregivers, because the research shows that up to 50 to 70 percent of all patients will be unable to make their own decisions mm. at, at some point in time medically. And so it's very important that the, that the caregivers and that the family members who will be the patient advocate or representatives for the patient know what the patient is trying to achieve. Right, because how would you know unless you talked about it? Right? And it's quite common that family members have not talked or talked enough amongst each other or with their, their mother or father or whoever the patient is okay. to understand what the patient is trying to achieve, what their wishes are. And so there's often uh, discord and confusion at a time where there really shouldn't be. Right, right. That, that's that's a, a great point that you bring up is that this is important to the patient, right, but mm. also to the family to relieve some of that burden, yeah. right? Because you want to make sure that you are making those decisions that that person wants, not what you want yeah. or what, you know, the friend or the fa other family members want, but really what your loved one wants. Yeah, in, in many cases, the family members are, there's a lot of burden, as you said, 
there's a lot of uh, anxiety and the fear that they're gonna not do everything that they should do or somehow they're gonna let their family member down. And so because of a lack of communication, they, they have a lot of potential guilt. They don't wanna have that guilt of, of doing the wrong thing. Decision making, advanced care planning with the patient and with the family together allows for, for an empowered family member who when the time comes then they have to make those decisions. They have the, they have the knowledge and they're empowered to make decisions on behalf so there is no guilt, there is no fear. Okay, wow, that's really, that's really great, that's empowering. I have my advanced directive completed. I've had the conversation. I have multiple conversations with my family members. Many of them are very resistant to filling out that form, but I know what they want. So the end goal is knowing what your family members want and the form comes later, if at all. So really we need to be able to communicate what's important to your loved one and then your loved one to communicate what's important to them. And, and talking about it as a family together before a serious situation so that when a serious situation, if a serious situation does come up, mm -hmm. the family can all be on the same page and they can all be supporting one another and not worried about, well, should we do this or should we do that? Right. Yeah. It's such a difficult time or it can be a difficult time, but this can make it just a little bit easier. Exactly. So, Jim, any final points? I would say communication, communication. The earlier the better. Uh, it's not just for the old, it's for everyone, every healthy adult, regardless of whether they have a diagnosis or not, uh, to think through what would I want in case of an event or an emergency. Wonderful. Well, if you have questions, you can always type them in the Facebook Live down there um, in the comment section, okay? Um, or you can email or call us and we can um, direct you in the right in the right way um, to to answering those questions so are there any questions that are being asked right now yes how does a person reach a chaplain at Henry Ford Health System great question if you're in the hospital you simply just talk to your nurse and your nurse will uh, request a, a chaplain visit if you're outside the hospital and you'd like to meet with me, we do have free advanced care planning uh, at both Macomb and West Bloomfield hospitals. You can call the operator and the operator will connect you with me. Wonderful, that's great. Awesome, so if you need um, anything else about chaplains, about advanced care planning, about advanced directives, or any other questions regarding caregiving, please give us a call, email us, or comment in, um, in the comment section. So thanks again, Jim, for joining me. My pleasure. And thank you for watching.